Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the final and fifth lecture of chapter seven. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, the first two problems are about understanding various aspects of the geometry of work and the nature of the displacement and the forces involved. Okay, so the first problem is suppose a net force acting on a particle of constant mass m, suppose f is that force, and suppose f gives a particle a displacement dr. Then we defined work as dw is f dot dr. And now recall Newton's laws are f, force, m, second derivative of displacement vector with respect to time. So f is proportional to the second derivative of the displacement r of the particle. Shouldn't f be proportional to this displacement r? Think about that. Okay, so the next problem is a little, is a kind of a particular example that gives you a little more insight into one. So R is the position vector of a particle of constant mass m, and V denotes a velocity, the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. So now let A denote a vector such that the force is velocity vector cross this vector A. And suppose that force, V cross A, is a net force acting on the particle. All right. Then show that this force does no work on the particle. Okay, you'll meet forces of this nature probably definitely when you study electromagnetism and possibly in other areas. Okay, three should be fairly easy, but I want you to think about these statements and explain what they mean. So the first statement, work is equal to the transference of kinetic energy. The second one, there can be no work without motion. Okay, four is a problem where you've seen bits and pieces of it already, and now we're going to build in the notion of work, kinetic energy and potential energy. So a particle of mass m moves in the xy plane in a way so that its position vector is given by this expression. All right, so I want you to show that the particle moves on an ellipse, and that's just getting you to understand that this parametric equ equation for ellipse, it's the same as the um, formula x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Show that the force acting on the particle is always directed towards the origin. We've had a couple of examples of this already. Okay, now we get into work, part C. Find the kinetic energy of the particle at points A and B. A is at the end of the semi-major axis, and B is at the end of the semi-minor axis. Okay? And you should be able to identify those points from the parametric relationship for the motion. Okay, then D, find the work done by the force field in moving the particle from point A to point B. Okay, change of kinetic energy. And that's what you're supposed to show in part E, but D is 
supposed to be demonstrated by computing the line integral. And you've computed line integrals where the particle moves on a parametric equation of this type. Okay, F. Show that the total work done by the force in moving the particle once around the ellipse is zero. G, show that the force field is conservative. The easiest thing to do is using the curl relation. Now find the potential energy at A and B, and then compute the work done using difference of potential energy and show that that's the same as using difference of kinetic energy, but there's a reversal involved, and you can check what I mean by reversal. Okay, problem five. This is getting back to an earlier problem of a projectile. You throw or project a particle straight up into the air. The only force acting on the particle is gravity pointing downward. It starts off with an initial velocity in the k direction. And then what I want you to do is use the definition of work given by the line integral, and then using the definition of work by difference of kinetic energy, the two points, sorry. Using those two definitions, I want you to find the highest point of the trajectory using those two approaches. The highest point of the project trajectory is when velocity is zero, kinetic energy is zero, potential energy is maximum. Those ought to be the the um, major hints that you'll need to do this problem. And then, problem six is an inclined plane problem that you've done earlier. I don't want you to compute the work done by the net force. The only force acting on the particle is gravity in this particular example. Resulting from the motion from the top of the incline to the bottom, top of the incline, maximum kinetic energy, sorry, minimum kinetic energy is zero, maximum potential energy, bottom of the incline, um, zero potential energy, maximum kinetic energy. So I want you to use it to compute it using the line integral and then using the uh, definition or difference of kinetic energy. And you should give it the same answer for both. So five and six are good problems for actually getting practice setting up and computing line integrals. Okay, do these problems. We're going to do similar ones in the next chapter. They're, they reinforce everything we've done. And I'll be back in the next chapter, chapter eight, talking about conservation of energy and momentum. So bye for now.